Hi YouTubers, resellers, and thrifters. My name is Carrie, and my channel here that you have found is Be Carried Away. I'm a sometimes part-time, sometimes full-time reseller. If you're new here, thank you so much. Please think about subscribing. And if you are a regular subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to my latest video. It's been a little bit of time. Um, we had issues with our dog Beck, and he had to be put to sleep. And it's been, um, as, if you probably saw my recent, most recent video, it was a memorial to him. So that was really difficult. Um, and we do now have a foster to adopt dog, which I will uh, let you meet at the end of the video. So I have about an hour. I'm in upstate New York. I came back up from New Jersey and I have literally one hour to go into my favorite thrift store, the Salvation Army. So I thought I would film get going again with some new videos and bring you along with me inside. So let's go inside and go thrifting and let's go find some money. Okay guys, so I did go inside my favorite store and I was not able to film in there. It was really crowded. So on my way home to New Jersey or back to New Jersey, I stopped at the thrift store, the Salvation Army in the Poconos. So the footage is actually different from the intro. So the first thing I see when I go inside is this really tall, only $8.99 wicker um, planter, outdoor planter. I really like this. I look at it for quite a long time. I love white wicker like that. I did end up um, doing comps on this and while the comps were high, I then went into solds. Uh, I shouldn't say the comps were high. There were three listed that were high, but the solds were unsold. There were none sold. And if you look at the shipping prices on some of these, these are really high shipping rates. I don't know that anybody would really get this planter at that high shipping rate. I probably could have shipped it for much less, but the others were in much better condition and I just let it go. Okay, these were um, really pretty. I did comp these after the fact, these really pretty expressions, pine cone um, canisters. I probably might have picked, mm, I don't know. They're heavy to ship. I'm trying to get away from that. I'm going to be teaching this semester. I'm trying to look for smalls primarily and clothing. Although here in this video, I'm looking at hard goods. I prefer to pick up smalls but um you know i just keep looking at those pine cone canisters um the comps were okay they were from about the 90s but i just didn't want to ship them i didn't comp this i think this is my mom had one of these and i think this is from kind of the 80s when they were doing copper parties don't you ever remember those there were parties you know home goods parties that were copper items i was a child actually it probably was earlier than the 80s um this is really cute uh, i didn't think it would bring a lot really cool crab i love seafood and crab type items so i do gravitate to it but i don't pick it up so because i'm driving back and forth from new jersey to new york i'm really being selective with what i get I do have a very, very large money pile, which is what I call mine, because I intentionally stock things up. Because of my lifestyle, um, I know that sometimes I'm going to be able to list a lot, sometimes I'm going to be able to thrift a lot. I picked that up. I actually thought about that for my parents, who recently adopted during the pandemic a black lab, but that didn't look at all like theirs, so I put that back. Um, this I'm very intrigued by. I do put this in the cart. They had a quite a high price on it. I didn't quite see it there, but I later end up finding a match to it, but there are no markings on it whatsoever. So it's really difficult to tell if that's a quality piece, hand carved, or if it's some kind of a replica. So I don't end up picking that carved uh, animal African piece. So again, I'm looking at the hard goods and the smalls. Um, it's just easier to ship for me and primarily easier to carry back and forth in my Jeep. You know, um, when you're living in two places and going back and forth, it gets pretty tedious to be, you know, tromping up and down the elevator or in and out of the house in the deep snow upstate New York and the really cold weather. It's six degrees out right now outside while I'm filming this. And, um, so I'm you know, being very, very selective. Okay, this is intriguing because of the price. They have this marked at $18.99. So to me, I'm thinking, well, is there something that they know that I don't know? 
Um, why is that $18.99? So I put that in the cart because I want to comp it. I do end up comping it, and it's not going for anything really crazy. It goes for, you know, 20 bucks. So that was just an overprice on that Salvation Army. I did find a couple of others, uh, Seven Up bottles, and I remember those. I remember those being around, you know, they were just stretched out regular glass soda bottles. But they were very popular decor items, and so. Uh, but I didn't end up getting them. This is really cute. This is a cloisonne um, piece. And again, cloisonne, if it's not marked like that, cloisonne is that enamel and uh, kind of brass look, um, enamel paint and brass overlay. And it has an Asian um, history to it. Some can be extremely valuable and others are just knockoffs. And when they're not marked like that, I have no idea. I'm not an expert. I don't know if it's worth anything. Again, put it in my cart. This is really intriguing. Now, this is some sort of really nice quality wood puzzle. Would have been something really interesting to pick up, but there were no instructions with it, and so it's just a jumble of wood. I wouldn't really be able to sell it for what it was. I love signs and signage. This one said captain's quarters. There were quite a few back there that I was looking at, some kind of uh, country craft style. There's those other 7-Up soda bottles. So right here, I turn off the video. I turn off my recording, and that's because I wanna comp them right there and then. Um, and as I said, I did find that they just weren't selling for what they were asking. So a lot of glass and ceramic. I do pick this up. I see the markings on the back. They're not asking a lot. It's signed. It's really beautiful, really beautiful piece. And I do put that in the cart and I do pick that up. So I do have that listed in my eBay store. I do Poshmark. I do Mercari. I do Facebook Marketplace. Now I'm drawn to cruise items. Cruisers are some of the most loyal travelers out there and they love their cruise ships they love the companies that they go with they love the actual ships so um i do take a look at those but for what they were asking i just didn't think a, a glass like that was anything too particularly special so i left that behind i'm looking at these holly hobby glasses um again i just didn't think they were particularly going to bring the kind of profit that I'm looking for. I like to have items that I'm going to make about a 15 to $20 profit on. That's just my, you know, that's my, that's what I shoot for. It does not mean that that's what I always get. Sometimes I end up dropping items back if I made a, a purchase that just wasn't going to bring that kind of money. But I do kind of um, keep that in my mind as I'm thrifting. That was a really beautiful pottery piece. Again, some of these items are just really, really gorgeous. But they're hard to um, they're hard to get keywords for, and to me, keywords are so important in driving traffic to not only to your store and your site, but to the particular item. If people cannot find your item, or if your item just gets lost in a sea of similar items, it's really going to take a long time to sell. Now, I am a long tail seller; I do not mind things sitting, but. Um, I'm not going to intentionally pick something up that I know is just going to sit. That's a great Corningware pattern, and um, that's the Gold Butterfly, I believe. I do have some of that actually currently listed. If that had been a cheaper price, I absolutely would have picked that up. I have made very good profit on that particular pattern, 1970s kind of Gold Butterfly pattern that is still quite popular. Again, just some really pretty... Um, pieces that, you know, if you're buying for yourself, when I was buying items for the apartment, that would be something I might have picked up. But if the buyers can't find it with a simple search, it's probably not going to go into my cart. Some glassware. Now, this store in the Poconos is um, known for just jumbling all of their stuff together and lots of glass, lots of unique items. I don't know what this is. I'm trying to dis determine. Obviously, that's Sylvester, and I'm trying to determine if that is something that came like that. There's Tweety Bird there on the side. 
definitely caught my attention, but it was very heavy and it looked to be homemade. It looked like something somebody had taken a bunch of different plates and put it together. So while it was intriguing, it was not intriguing enough to bring it home. Here I am looking at all of the smalls, just hoping to find small items, you know, that are easy to pack and carry. Now there's the matching piece to the animal. I'm not sure the particular, is it a Giselle? Is it an Impala? Something of that nature. And so I wanna just take a look at those two together. Here's another one, here's an elephant, but I really, even with, you know, Google image and kind of just Google searching, I wasn't able to determine that they were really going to be worth the money um, they were asking. And again, how would I sell that without any, you know, authenticity to where it came from and whether it was a reproduction or hand carved valuable piece because some of them can be quite valuable but unfortunately there was no sticker no markings so lots of glassware again just scanning now when i was here at the store i also had about one hour i was on my way back to new jersey i had just left um, upstate new york and so I'm just browsing, taking a look to see what I can see. That's really one of the fun aspects. There's the Thousand Islands, and that's where we spend a lot of time in our summers boating in upstate New York. On the New York side, also crosses over into Canada. But because of the pandemic, we've been unable to cross the river until late, late last summer. Um, so I do say primarily New York City. Now, these, this is the special case by the counter and you can see I'm looking through there they price items way up in there and you know sometimes they get it right and sometimes they don't but there's always really beautiful items in there electronics boxed goods these are fun to look through because they can be easy to list if items have a barcode on the back or in the box it can be quite simple to you know find out exactly what it is and to even to list it can be very simple because if you use the barcode it might just pop up um, with a pre-filled listing on ebay and those are great i don't do a lot of that kind of stuff i'm just not drawn to it as you know i prefer to do vintage smalls um, clothing and shoes but i definitely do take a look through the electronics so I'm back over kind of almost where I started um, on that aisle. Lots of plastics, everything just kind of jumbled together. Now this plastics aisle, lots of water bottles. Generally don't expect to find anything of uh, very much profit value in this particular aisle, but I do take a look. I think that these might be Tupperware and some vintage Tupperware tumblers can be valuable in larger lots, but um, that's not what they were. So I do kind of go through this aisle pretty quickly. I'm not expecting necessarily to see a lot of value, but it's a thrift store, so you never know what you're going to find. <laughs> um, I look at this black light up here. I did I pick it up? Yeah, I did pick that up. I thought maybe I would purchase that. It was really inexpensive. Everybody, as a reseller, you really want to have a black light for looking at certain types of glass that might have uranium in them. And if it's uranium glass, you can get more money for it. The uranium will glow in the light of the black light. So that's why I put that in my cart, not to resell, but to actually um, use. I don't find a lot of glass that I think is uranium glass, but you know, it can't hurt to have that. They're good for Halloween too. Um, so these are some candles. I'm a little unsure if they're like vintage, electronic, battery operated candles. I put them in my cart, but I do not end up keeping them. There's a carved unicorn type candle. Unicorn lovers are also very, very um, loyal. So if you find some unique 
unicorn pieces they're worth picking up now i did put this lennox piece in my cart i didn't even look at it before i put it in the cart i know that lennox is a great brand so if it turns out to be something that comps high i'll be glad to have it in my cart but i will definitely check the comparables or comps and see what sold uh, in that particular item it turns out to be an olive dish so a long slim painted olive dish and it didn't comp out very high in terms of my 15 to 20 dollar profit margin goal and so i did put that back again lots of like low probably not very high profit items through this area tins and candles and things like that so i'm not going to be doing any clothing today i'm just doing hard goods because i'm traveling through so i kind of feel that i have to pick one or the other on certain days if i'm you know if i'm limited in time and the hard goods are right downstairs when you walk in the door so i thought i would take a look now this is something i definitely would pick up and take a look at this is real wood and this was just a single piece so i did put that back it was a kind of a hard pass because that might have been a nice seller i do like those wooden pieces and the term that you want to use is hollywood regency that's a very particular very ornate style of decorating and Hollywood Regency items can bring some really good money whether they're real wood like that or Sirocco or Burwood the plastic um, wood plastic made to look like ornate gold painted wood I pick up this Jean Tu candle it's still in the wrap and Jean Tu I'm looking at the bottom there was a perfume so a vintage perfume so I did comps on that candle and sure enough because it's old and it's still wrapped it's um, not being made anymore so someone who loves that perfume Jean Tu could would certainly purchase it and that's why it had a pretty nice um, pretty nice sell through rate in fact and as well as comps so for a low price I did pick up that rose Jean Tu perfumed candle. Paper goods, picture frames, photo albums. Unless these are truly vintage, they're not going to bring much money, and that's a category that I pretty much pass over. I'm skimming it really, just looking to see if any of these items are vintage. I do pick up more wood these days than I used to, so I do look through the wood. Um, just lots of, now this is kind of a newer wood, um, newer wood snowman, so I leave that behind. Some salad bowls, I generally will look at salad bowls if they're larger and made of you know really quality wood. Some leftover Christmas items i'm shopping here in january so i do see some leftover christmas and christmas items are 50 percent off today at the store so certainly something to consider at least this was a really pretty craft item not super high quality so while it was pretty it was not something i would pick up for resale some coasters and you can see here this store um they try although it's quite a jumble they do try to keep things together by category my salvation army in upstate new york generally goes by color so it does help to sh to shop at the same stores repeatedly you kind of get a sense of the lay of the land or the way that they put items out so if you have even less time you have an idea of you know where you're looking and what you might be looking at some cookie cutters again Christmas these were intriguing because they because of what they were made of they were almost like a not ceramic but like a, a plaster almost and so that was something that I put in the cart I did not end up getting them after doing comps or comparables now this is the creamer for the Pioneer Woman. It's only $1.99. So I do put that in my cart, Pioneer Woman. I've talked about it in other videos. It is something definitely to think about. Here's some Tupperware. It didn't look in very good condition, so I left that behind. But as you can see, so they have all of the tissue holders there, for example, in one grouping, regardless of color. So going back to Pioneer Woman, 
Uh, that creamer didn't comp out particularly high at a dollar ninety nine buy in, so I did not keep it. But other other pieces from Pioneer Woman, even though it's sold, you know, at Walmart, for example, it's still something to keep your eye on because it's retained its value. It's very popular, and once they sell out, say at Walmart or it's an item that's you know a few years old and it's no longer on the shelves, it is something that people will seek out on platforms like eBay, Mercari, etc., Facebook Marketplace. Some dog clothing. Um, our stepdaughter has a little teeny tiny four pound dog, so sometimes I look at items like that just for her stocking or Christmas stocking gifts, things like that. I thought this pattern was really pretty. This green and yellow, it looked very 70s-ish to me. Um, but there were no markings and I couldn't tell if that was really just a reproduction or if it was truly vintage. Kind of e either really what it was, it was just kind of like a, a ceramic hot plate. Now this store has a lot of pots and pans and Pots and pans can go quite well, especially vintage I like to pick up. Um, I did cut this out, but it wasn't really going for it. It was in terrible condition, so it wasn't something that I would have even thought about picking up because of the condition. It wasn't really even something that could be cleaned up very much. So I do, I don't like to pick up a lot of pots and pans, but I do look through them because some of them can be very, very valuable, so you wouldn't you know, if something's a $100 plus item, I certainly would pick it up. But it's not my favorite. I don't like these large bulky items. This was cute. This was a vintage ice bucket, which can be popular because they are great on, um, you know, a retro bar. It's Chromex, which is a great brand. They wanted seven dollars though and look how beat it once i turned it, it started spinning and looking at all the sides of that it just really was not in good condition it had scratches and um really more like scuffs on the side so it certainly wasn't display worthy so look at all this stuff back here so i'm getting out of the shelving area and they kind of just have aisles with larger things piled up and well i'm not <laughs> I don't want to go back into the larger items aisle. I, you know, you can't pass by. So I'm looking over, you know, just kind of scanning again. You know, I've already looked through some of these aisles, but it is really important to kind of keep scanning. It's so, so easy to miss things. And these videos make it even more, uh, you're, you're even more uh, tied in to keep looking because then you are forced to go back and see what you have missed. So whether you have a YouTube channel or not, it really is kind of a fun, interesting um, experiment to film while you're searching because when you go back at the footage you can kind of see what you wish you had looked at and what you maybe wasted your time looking at now these I don't know this was a whole lot a whole set of Marvel heroes stickers and they may or may not have been valuable Courtney over at Bolo Buddies has a really interesting video on vintage stickers so if they had been vintage I probably should have picked them up so that was really the extent of my um, shopping that particular day I hope you saw some things that were interesting if you saw anything that I really missed in the um, video please let me know in the comments down below and I'll be back soon with a haul video and I have several more what sold videos which are really my favorite to do they take a little bit longer but um, I hope to see you guys back here again soon. So thanks so much for coming thrifting with me. Hey, Johnson. Hi, Johnson. Is that a mirror? That's you. That's you, sweet boy. That's you, honey. Yeah, we're gonna wait till Mike puts the groceries away, okay? Come here, honey. Come here. Good. Good. Aw. I love you, honey. You're such a good boy, huh? I know. I know. I know. Johnson. Aw.
those ears, huh? So as you can see, Wiley is looking so much better these days, and I hope to feature him in many more videos upcoming. Happy thrifting, everybody. Thanks for watching.